So hello everybody and welcome at the Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust, Nairobi Nursery. Uh, this is a nursery that takes care of orphan uh, baby elephants and orphan baby rhinos and later on uh, reintroducing them back into the world. And the Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust is a project that was started officially back in the year 1977 after the death of David Sheldrick who was a naturalist and the senior found warden of the large Savannah National Park. And he died in 1977. And this project was started in his memory under the management of the widow, who is now the late Dr. Dem Daphne Sheldrick, who's been running the project since then, until two years ago, when she passed on, leaving the mandate to her daughter, Angela Sheldrick, who was running the 17 years before the mother passed on. And right now, the project is under the management of Angela Sheldrick. And so we've got 12 baby elephants in the nursery who are all orphans and have been rescued from different parts of the country with different reasons for being orphans. And some of them, we know exactly what has caused them to be left orphans, and that's why we rescued them. Others, we're really not very sure. But since the others were found when they are still at a very young age, at an age where they would not have survived without the mother's milk, and also without protection against other dangers, that's why we had to come in so that we can help rescue them, handrail them here in the nursery for approximately three years, and any time after the age of three, start to reintroduce them back into the world. I will let you know more about the reintroduction part the elephants are already here, and uh, we are having the 11 a.m. milk feed. And we've got the first elephant to come in is Mukoka, who is an elephant who is only two years old, who is rescued from northern part of Savo East National Park, a place called Edumba, who was identified all along within the park while at the age of about seven months, which is not normal and also not safe. And I say not normal and safe because naturally in the world, a young elephant will need to suckle the mother for the first two years minimum. And if they happen to lose the mother soon they're below two, it is obvious that they cannot survive. They can easily starve to death or can be attacked by the lions or the hyenas and be killed. So that is why Mukoka was at a risk of either starving or being attacked. And that's why he needed to be rescued. Far end is Kyombo, who is the oldest boy, almost three years old, having been rescued from the Masai Mara, identified all alone within the park at a young age of below a year old, which is also not normal, and that's why there was need for him to be rescued. Right now, he's almost three years old. This is the oldest boy we've got in the nursery at the moment. Taking water from the water hole is the youngest elephant in the nursery. Her name is Naleku. She's approximately a year old. She was rescued from the Masai Mara and f or left an orphan after the mother had died from a natural disease. She was left in the company of an auntie who was taking care of her. But this auntie already had her own baby that was breastfeeding, which means she could not provide milk to Naleku as well. And this is because a lactating female elephant does not want to jeopardize the status of her own baby for the sake of another one. And that's why Naleku could only be provided with protection, but no milk, which means in the long run she would starve to death because she was about six months. And at that age, they don't have strong teeth to browse on greens. Elephants will start to develop the milk teeth at the age of between two to four months and at the age of eight months. That is when they start to learn to feed on different types of vegetation. And at the age of two years, that is when they can feed on enough to survive without the mother's milk. But below that, they need to supplement this with the mother's milk. And that is why it is important that Naleku was rescued. Otherwise, she could not have survived. That is the only group of three out of the 12 that will be joining us today. We've got another group of four coming in now being led by an elephant by the name Maktau, who is also almost three years old. And Maktau was rescued uh, from Sava Conservation Area near a place called Maktau. 
He was found in our community all alone while at a young age of about three months. And that three months, uh, this elephant would not have survived. And also being found in our community, suspects that he might have been separated from his family by human beings. And so he's a victim of human wildlife conflict. Right now, approximately uh, two and a half years old. Next to Maktau is a three-year-old elephant, second oldest that we've got in the nursery, an elephant by the name Nabulu, who was rescued from the Masai Mara, who was identified all alone within the park, very thin, very weak, very much dehydrated, a sign that she had been alone for a very long time and was as well starving, a sign that she was an orphan already, and that's why there was need for her to be rescued. Right now, she's approximately three years second oldest, assisting Maisha to lead the rest of the group in the nursery. Taking water now from the water hole is an elephant by the name Roho, who is the youngest boy that we've got in the nursery at the moment. And Roho is about 17 months old. Roho was rescued from Savo West National Park. The mother is suspected to have been killed by poachers, and that's why he was left alone while at a young age of about seven months. Right now, he's approximately 17 months old. Biggest in size happens to be the main matriarch, the mother figure, the leader of all the elephants that we've got in the nursery. Her name is Maisha. She's approximately over three years, having been rescued from Sava Conservation Area. She's a drought victim. Her mother is believed to have died from starvation due to drought, and that's why she was left alone at about eight months. Right now, she's approximately over three years, and she's the oldest that we've got, therefore making her the main matriarch of all the others in the nursery because by natural instinct, it is always the oldest female that automatically becomes a leader. The latest arrival in the nursery is an elephant by the name Olorian, who is approximately 15 months old, who was rescued from the Masai Mara, who was identified all alone and observed for some time, hoping and expecting the mother or the rest of the family members to come back and collect this baby, something that never happened. And by the time that she was being observed, she was growing thin and weak. Her health was deteriorating every now and then which means she needed to be rescued. And that's why a rescue was done immediately to save her life. Right now, she's approximately a 15 month. She's the latest arrival in the nursery and the newest on our adoption list. If you're looking forward to adopting an elephant, she's the newest on our list to adopt. Behind Olorian is an elephant by the name Naboishu, who is approximately uh, almost two years. Naboishu was rescued uh, from the Masai Mara. Well, I think you can see the character of Kiasa. <laughs> that is why we always bring her last. She always causes trouble. If she comes in and the others are still having milk, she wants extra milk by force and wants to charge everyone around. And that's why we always bring her last. Kiasa is an elephant who is approximately three years old who was rescued uh, from Sava Conservation Area, who is a drought victim, whose mother is believed to have died from starvation due to drought, and that's why we rescued her. She's always been known as the naughtiest elephant in the nursery since the arrival, until the time Roho came in the nursery, and that is why her bad character changed. But it did not change completely because we've just seen what she's done. She still has part of that character when it is feeding time. She always wants to get extra milk and wants it by force uh, without nicely talking to the keepers or, or without waiting. And she had already finished her two bottles, but she still wants more. And that is her character. We know her. She's got both the two characters, good and bad. At some point, you'll find her concentrating on taking care of Rojo and the other little ones. But when it's feeding time, it's no nonsense girl. She wants milk and extra milk after finishing her bottles. She's uh, three years old at the moment. We do have uh, Ziwadi who is gone at the far end of the bottom and Ziwadi is approximately two years old. Ziwadi was rescued uh, from the Masai Mara. 
she was identified all alone within the park, suspected to have been abandoned or left behind by the rest of the family members for reasons we could not tell on arrival. But after some time, we discovered that she is epileptic and sometimes she goes into seizures and once she's left, she's gone on the ground, she's left behind by the rest of the family members, uh, we suspect that might have been the reason to why she was left behind by the rest of the family members. When she came in, we put her on medication. She's improved a lot. She stayed for quite a long time without having the seizures, which means she's improving. And we expect her to get back to normal by the time she'll be going back into the world. Next to me is Naboishu, um, who's Kiasa wanted to take his milk. And Naboishu is uh, a, a, an elephant that is almost two years. And Naboishu was rescued from the Masai Mara. The mother is believed to have died from a natural disease. And that's why he was left alone. The last one right in the middle is Laro, who is approximately two years old. And Laro was rescued from the Masai Mara or Laro Conservancy. Identified all alone, suspected to have been separated from her family by human beings. And so she's a victim of human wildlife conflict. Enjoying the dust pile is uh, Rojo, who loves to do that most of the time, rolling down in the dust pile very close. And you can tell who is standing behind Rojo, the mother figure, Maisha, trying to provide all the protection and care that is needed. Try to ensure that Rojo is all safe from being lied on top by the other big elephants who might cause an injury to him. And that's why Maisha is standing right behind to make sure that all is good. So that makes a total of uh, 12 elephants. And these are all the orphans that we've got in the nursery at the moment under our care for the first three years. And any time after the age of three, we will start to reintroduce all the elephants back into the world. And we necessarily don't take them where we found them, but we'll always reintroduce them to Savo East National Park and Kibwezi Forest. We've got three reintroduction centers based with our keepers. We lead our orphans out in the park every day, setting them free to try interact with different groups of wild elephants and communicate and make friends. And late in the evening, our orphans will be directed at our base where they'll all spend the night. But after a long period of interacting and communicating and playing and making friends with different wild families, they make special bonds with specific wild herds who are interested in them, who later on invite them and adopt them in their families. And once the wild elephants adopt them, we set them free and let them become wild once again. Once the wild elephants adopt them, they will train them, they will protect them, they will warn them against human beings, which means all these orphans that you can see here now, at some point, will have become as wild as any other elephant out there. And when they go back into the world, our orphans will decide by themselves when they're ready to go, which wild herd they want to join, whom to accompany with. Our keepers will just observe and see the reaction. And one, once it happens, then we can successfully say we've achieved our target. Because our main target here is to rescue them. Since they were found orphans, hundred them, and later on, reintroducing them back into the world. And that happens when most of them are over the age of 8 to 10 years. Because it takes them a minimum of 5 years in Savo on the process of being reintroduced and a minimum of three years in the nursery before we take them back into the world to start the process of being reintroduced. Some might go to Savo at a very early age of below, uh, two, uh, below three years, let's say two and a half years. And these are elephants that have naughty characters like uh, Kiasa. If the big girls left the nursery and Kiasa uh, keeps on bullying the young ones around and not protecting them, then she might need to go and get discipline from the big girls in Savo. But from the fact that she's got both the two coins of the character, sometimes she's caring motherly, 
we expect her to take on and take over when Maisha and Nabulu leave the nursery. If you're joining us now, welcome. We are at the Sheldrick's World of Trust Nairobi Nursery. The elephants have just finished the 11 a.m. milk feed. This is where we will have the public coming to see them at 11 on a normal uh, time. But because of the COVID-19, we are not open to the public. And that is why we are bringing you these live videos so that you can see your babies from wherever you are, from your sitting room. You get to enjoy to see your babies because we have to continue uh, taking care of them. As I said, we feed them on intervals of three hours day and night. And the milk that we are feeding them is not an elephant's milk because it is not very easy to milk a wild elephant and get the real milk. And at the same time, we cannot feed them on cow's milk since cow's milk has got lots of fats and elephants are poor in fat digestion. And that's why we feed them on a human baby formula whose fats have been emulsified to make it easier for the babies to digest. And this formula was pioneered by the founder of this project, the late Dr. Dame Daphne Sheldrick, after 28 years of research. Rolling down in the dust pile is a Kyombo in front, and uh, behind Kyombo is uh, a Maktau, the two big boys in the nursery. The small one here is uh, Naleku, also enjoying the dust pile. So if you're joining us now, welcome at the Sheldrick's World of Trust, Nairobi Nursery. Lying down on top of the dust pile is Roho. And uh, Maisha standing very close, providing all the security that is needed and protection and care. And the motherly touch to the baby as well. I want to say Maisha has really spoiled Roho because Roho always wants to be close to Maisha and Maisha wants to be always close to Roho. You'll find the two all together all the time. And when you compare Roho and Naleku, who is younger than Roho, Naleku is very independent, very outgoing, and she wants to do her own things. She wants to feed on her own, while Roho will always and always be attached to either Maisha most of the time or Nabulu and Kias as well. Next to uh, next to Roho and Kiasa is Laro, also being assisted to dust bath. So you might be wondering why all these elephants were found orphans. And different reasons have caused them to be left orphans. And human wildlife conflict is one of the major reasons that has caused most of these babies to be left orphans. And human wildlife conflict is a big problem in our country. And it is a problem because there is always an increase in the population of man or human beings compared to the space or size of land. And this has caused human beings to occupy areas that belong to wild animals. And that is why areas where these animals have known originally to browse and look for water have been occupied by people. Migratory routes of wild animals no longer exist. Uh, people are doing lots of farming, lots of developments and structures. 
and people are planting crops very close to the national parks, the reserves are causing conflicts because sometimes uh, the crops next to the parks and the reserves will attract the animals and the animals might break the fence to get into feeding on the vegetation, I mean on the crops. And that causes conflict between the communities and the animals. Sometimes the migratory routes of animals have been occupied and if they want to move from one park to the other, they cannot do it. They encounter the structures, the crops, and people want to fight them. In that course of the fight, sometimes the mothers end up being killed. Sometimes the babies get separated from the rest of the family members. And if identified all alone later on, nobody knows where the mother is or where the rest of the family members are. And that is why, if conducted, we have to fly out and go and help rescue them. And that is why human-wildlife conflict is one of the major reasons that has caused most of these babies to be left orphans and therefore brought here in the nursery. Ivory poaching is another reason that has caused some of them uh, to be left orphans. And it is unfortunate that ivory poaching is still uh, going on, though in Kenya we are happy to note that uh, there ha has been a decrease or a reduction in the trend of poaching. We pray and hope and believe that the reduction continues until there will be no poaching completely. So a few of them, the mothers are coming, the, the, mothers, the babies have come in because the mothers were killed by poachers uh, due to the trade in ivory. And very few orphans from natural reasons like old age, natural diseases, and starvation back into the world. And if any of these things happen to the mother when the baby is below two years, then it is obvious the baby will not survive. Even if the baby was still with the rest of the herd, the rest of the family members will only provide protection and no milk. So the baby will starve in the long run to death we while with the rest of the family members. That's why they need to be rescued. If you're joining us now, welcome. We are at the Sheldrake's World of Trust, Nairobi Nursery. Twelve baby elephants before us now, all orphans. And the Sheldrake's World of Trust does not only take care of baby elephants, rhinos, and reintroducing them back into the world. We also have other projects that we undertake. For example, we have got mobile veterinary units. We've got anti-poaching teams. Uh, we've got community projects, we've got an aerial surveillance, we've got a dock unit, and all this is working together with the Kenya Wildlife Service to ensure that all animals are safe in the parks. And that is why our mobile veterinary unit will help treat any injured animal within the park. Not necessarily elephants and rhinos alone. Any injured animal, if identified, we are conducted and we've got the Kenya Wildlife Service vets who are actually being sponsored by the Sheldrake's Wildlife Trust to go and do the treatment and set the animals free to continue with their own uh, natural life. We've got our anti-poaching teams that will patrol the parks and ensure that the no poachers in the parks, the no snares in the parks, the no people burning charcoal in the parks, and the anti-poaching teams will work together with the dock unit and the aerial surveillance to ensure that the parks are safe. We also have a community project that will educate the communities that are neighboring the parks and the reserves so that they can stay peacefully neighboring one another with these wild animals. And the same community project will also go around the schools that are neighboring the parks and the reserves, educating the children on matters conservation and wildlife. It is important for the young kids in school to learn and know that all animals have the right to life and all animals need to be protected and cared for. And they need to be taught on how to care, on how to behave in case they encounter these uh, animals while on the daily routine. So all those projects are being done by the Sheldrake's Wildlife Trust working together with the Kenya Wildlife Service. You might want to support the, pro the, the work that is being done by the Sheldrake's Wildlife Trust. You are highly welcomed. You only need to go on our website and find out how you can donate. You can donate towards adopting an elephant, which is costing a minimum fee of 50 US dollars a year. 
And when you do that, we will open an account for you. We'll be updating your account every month, letting you know all that is happening in the nursery. You can adopt an elephant for yourself or you can do it as a gift to a friend. And if you do it as a gift to the gift recipient, we'll receive the updates every month. But if you do it for yourself, it's you that will receive the updates every month. You'll, al you'll also receive a watercolor painting, which is done by Angela Keldrick. You'll also receive a keeper's a diary, which is written every day by the keepers, telling different stories from different orphans. Maisha on the ground, Roho mounting on top. So um, uh, you can also go on our website and find out how you can donate towards buying a bottle of milk for these baby elephants. You can go on our website and find out how you can donate towards the other projects that are being done by the Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust. So uh, kindly go on our website and read more about all that we do, and you'll be able to ensure that you are participating in this work of saving and protecting all the animals in general. Maisha still on the ground and Roho behind, playing with the dust pile. Now, I would like to take this opportunity and thank you all for joining us for this short period of seeing the 12 baby elephants having the milk at 11 a.m. here in the Nairobi Nursery, Kenya. The elephants will lead out in the park for the rest of the day until at 5 in the evening when they come back for bed. And we set them free out in Nairobi National Park so that they can learn by natural instinct on how to behave as wild elephants out there. And this is because eventually they will be set free to stay a natural life. So that is why they spend the whole day out in the park from 6 in the morning up to 5 in the evening when they come back for bed. And we bring them back in the stockades to protect them from other dangers out in the park like the lions and the hyenas who actually can really want to attack the babies because they're still young. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. We hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. And remember to continue staying safe as we continue to take care of the baby elephants. Thank you.